just have to X this out. I know I'm live. I think I'm live. I hope I'm live for y'all. I can't get you over my phone now because the old video is over there and it will not, it won't come in. Let me see. Maybe I can get it now. Okay. I believe we got it. Thank you, Lord. I believe we have it. Do, am I on? Y'all let me know. Can you see me? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I think we're all live. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I want to cry. Just let me know. Simon, hello, honey. Simona, hi, honey. I'm, I'm late, but did I did get on. It took me eight minutes. See, it's really, it's really, but thank goodness y'all are on there. Welcome back. Thank y'all for telling me. I wasn't sure I could get back on. And it came back on. I got it up, but it was back on. Linda Blankenship I had to start all over again. Lisa Hill. Thank you, Lisa. Please. Thank y'all. I thank the Lord that y'all are so faithful and you hung in here with me. I remember when you stayed on 40 minutes and 30 minutes whenever it went before I had all the power boost here in the house. Will, everybody healed in Jesus. There must be something wonderful. <clears throat> it's going to happen tonight for all this to happen. Oh, my goodness. Deborah, honey, and Regina, I love y'all. Thank you for staying with me and praying. I know you were praying to help me. And the Lord got me on here. And there's the thing down here when I end tonight, I can click it. Dr. So, honey, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank y'all for, for holding me up. Because see, things like that when you're my age kind of throws you. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we're, I've already asked her about to ask for forgiveness because I've asked the Holy Spirit. Shelby and I have asked the Holy Spirit to empower, empower to touch homes tonight with miraculous changes, miraculous changes, whatever it is. Believe for tonight. The Holy Spirit's power is flowing, and he is here for you and for me. And it doesn't matter who you are as long as you've repented, you're right in. There's nothing blocking we're in the blood covenant together if you know Jesus. So let me just start where I will usually start. I welcome you. I'm telling you, if you go to YouTube under Linda Blankenship and listen to the old, old, and share it, it won't hurt you. It can't hurt anything. There's a lot of good food back there from the Lord. Now, see, there's no more comments again. Stop the comments again. I don't care as long as I'm on Master's Dutch Ministries. Um... Let's see. Now, see, that bothered me because they all stopped. Come on. Write comments. I pray it stays up there. I don't know what all is going on. But anyway, <clears throat> these are, I want to just tell you the countries, new countries that are on. <clears throat> and some of them are going to be watching because Armenia. Uh, we have two or three new ones. Um, Delta Timor Leste, Madagascar, India, Port Moresley, New Guinea is on. It's a new one. Uh, Ethiopia, Nepal, the Philippines, Nigeria, the Ivory Coast, Pakistan. And did I say New Guinea? They're, they, these are the countries that they're listed now. And we just thank the Lord. We just like, and this happened from last week to this week, ages 24 to 34. There are more men, 60% are men watching in the age 24 to 34. So there's, the devil is not stopping us. And I'm not getting one comment from anybody. So I can't fix it, y'all. I can't, I can't, I don't, I can't fix it. So I'm so sorry. Um. So we, 60% of these young men are young men, the men we love, the men that love. God's got so much for you. Just stay in here and learn everything you can to help you move in life and, and become uh, free and in peace and walking with the Lord. Like there's 3,700 young men at that age watching to 2,500 women, if you cut it down by the hour or something. So that is so good. We had 209 new followers this, since I last saw you. Now, this is a, uh, a young man from Pakistan. No, he's, he told me he's from the Ivory Coast. 
because he's been messaging me and he was born again yesterday through messenger he's living in a, a place that that's that hasn't been finished he sleeps on the floor on a blanket and a self-made pillow uh, he's very depressed he can't find a job and he has no water or electricity and he his his name is z-a-n-a Q-U-A-T-T-E-R-A. -T -T -E and he knows tonight that his name is being called out on here for th this group, Body of Christ, believers here, to believe God is going to get him, find him a job this week. Like this week, something supernatural is coming to his way so he can survive because he's in the place of not surviving. And we ask God to move in on the, his life. And then, and then there was another um, uh, young man from India he has a tribal ministry in India and also Nepal and his name is K-I-S-H-A-N and then L-A-P and then R-A-G-J-P-U-T-H and he's asked for minute for prayer for his ministry that God uses him mightily and that God provides all all his provisions and that this ministry to the tribe has a tribal ministry. And we thank God for this. Listen, this thing is reaching around the world and these lives get changed and we uh, back them up with prayer. God's going to change millions of lives. That's just how it all works. One doing one thing and another doing another. And I just, I am so thankful for this. Um, this week, I'm going to tell you what some some people, some things that have people been delivered from, because it, I think this is for you to hear this. So, you know, if you know somebody, they can be delivered. All right. I was praying for, I pray for a lot of men, a lot of men and, and actually some teenagers, college kids do. Disposition, something about the disposition was not from the Lord. And the Lord, that's what he, the Holy Spirit called that disposition. And underneath that was insecurity, fear, and a counterfeit. Because the, his, his disposition had been attacked in some way. And was and this was the stuff that was laid under it. And he was delivered. And then, uh, this was another one. I got disqualified over this person. And under that was, um, I saw a covering. And it looked like an Indian um, blanket. Because it had circles and like feathers and then another circle inside. I don't even know, but that's what it looked like covering this thing. So I don't know what that meant, but I command the cover, always command coverings to come off. Not always, but most of the time because the enemy hides so you can't find it. I mean, they know what they're doing. So anyway, the covering came off and under it, I saw this man's hand on a pump, like where you used to pump water, you know, like, um, like we did as kids when we didn't have running water in the house. And went to the well and pump. He was pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping, and nothing's coming out. Nothing. This was the curse. Um, it was uh, endless. The uh, the curse was uh, a dead end. Everything was a dead end. And and then there was the Avenger. Was the last thing I got. The Avenger. Uh, and so this person got delivered from that this week. So things are going to change for him. And then I was praying for a teenager. A mother called for a teenager. And I heard the word rogue, R-O-G-U-E. And I wasn't sure. And I, there's a lot of things under it. But I, the thing that stood out to me was isolation. This child isolates himself. And he really, he does try to. But the Lord gave me the word, a scientific mind on this child. So whatever the enemy was trying to do in all this, I don't know, but God broke that off of him. And he, he has a scientific mind. And we, we cover it with the blood and no devil's going to touch what God's given him. And he will fulfill whatever purpose the Lord has for him. So those were the things. And then um, I pray for a man that's had several emotional affairs that's almost destroyed their, his life. It really almost destroyed his life because of the guilt. But God's delivered him. It is delivering him. But this is what I got, uh, incognito. And I looked that up, and it means hidden, disguised self. And I'm going to just tell you something, because you can't fool around with this kind of stuff. It brings demonic spirits into you, and then you're tormented. And they're saying it, it, these were emotional affairs. Now, they did not ever go over into all the way. It was emotional affairs. 
And so uh, I got in, con and then I got um, a charlatan spirit, and I looked that up, and under the words underneath that is a cheater. And sanctimonious was it under him uh, in this. So you, we we broke all that off. We broke it all off, and I asked God to look what I do. You know, we cleanse it with the blood. We ask the Lord to purify it. We dedicate that part of the person back to the Lord Jesus to bring wholeness and healing, to fill that area with the Holy Spirit. So that these are just things. So you know, if 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 you've ever had um, soul connections in any way with anybody, not just this way, you have to break them. You you have to break it off of you and break the 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 tie the tie you have in your emotions. And sometimes it's in the mind and everything, but. These are, this is, you cannot fool around. We live in the spiritual world. It's the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan, and we're here in the middle. And we have more power than the enemy can ever think of. He was defeated totally at Calvary, but we have to stay, take our stand and not willfully go into sin. Not, I'm, you can be delivered. The Lord has deliverance for us, and he has mercy on all of us. Thank God for that for his mercy and his, quit and his slow to anger. And the whole thing is he wants you delivered because you're miserable. And you're walking in a way and in sin and you're a Christian, you're miserable. And, it, and there's a, it, there's a, if you don't get straight, it will run you. And you don't want that. So I thank God for these. Those were the, I think the only, that was the delivery. There was some more. There was a big one. I don't know if this was for America or for the state of South Carolina. I don't know what, but let me tell you. I was in there praying for all, all of us. Um, what's today? Sunday. I think it was Wednesday morning. And I was praying it really in the spirit praying. And all of a sudden, this huge owl sitting in front of me like the size of a man looking at me with those eyes. Didn't blink his eyes, nothing. And I knew it was bad because, I mean, I'm praying. And all of a sudden, this is uh, so... Um, I bound it and I bound it and I bound it and bound it, you know, and cast it back to the master, but it wouldn't leave. But finally, it had to go because, you know, I, I warfare and I'm going my t the warfare tongues, and and the devils have to bow and they do have to bow because it's the Holy Spirit after them. And I've already done everything I do before to get rid of them. But anyway, before he could leave, it was like the airways were covering something with him. It was like, I could see through it, but it was like a fog. And all this fog came from all directions, like airways, the atmosphere everywhere. I don't know where where all it was from. Came and gathered all. I mean, as far as I could see, it's there he is, and it's right, it was right there hanging with him. And the Lord took them all and dumped them in the pits. And I remember... Um, Afterwards, I did. I commanded, you know, there permanently, and then I gave it back to Jesus to deal with it, and do whatever He wants to with them. But I remember the Lord said, "Sanctify, clarify, uh, cleanse the atmosphere," and I did. It. I called on the Holy Spirit. I called on the blood. I called on the war and angels. I called on every and asked them to totally go wherever this thing was because it wasn't just around me. I mean, it came from everywhere. Well, I was sharing this with Linda Jackson, so she looked up the aisle and something deaf. And it could be, I don't know, what, it was so big. God delivered a huge deliverance. And it was when I was praying for all of us in there. So I don't know what's going on, but God sees it and no devil's going to defeat us in Jesus' name. As long as we stay in love with the Lord, crying out to him. And 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 who knows who all got delivered from this thing? I have no idea. In heaven, the Lord will explain it to us someday. But these are real. And God is getting the victory. He is getting the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How dare that thing come up and stand in front of me when I'm in the spirit praying for all of us in the seat. And had the Lord God Almighty made sure I saw it. Because it was hanging around to do some damage. And now it's damaged. And permanently. And permanently this atmosphere that it was in and was had its spirit all over it is in the pits with it until Jesus deals with it. I have no no names coming up at all, y'all. And I am so sorry. I mean, I have none. I just ask Lord to keep them coming, please. 
and Jesus, just then because I punched at Dawn and Dave and Regina, I'm going to keep going. So, and I just think the Lord wants me to share these things with y'all because I, you need to know what's going on in the spiritual realm and you need to be uh, engaged Ask the Lord to start showing you things or, or just having, he can, you don't even have to see it. You have an impression, you have a word, you have a thought. Jennifer, Jennifer, honey, I'm so glad your name just popped up. Thank the Lord. Uh, Jennifer's the only name on there. So thank you, Lord. So now I want to go, I want to, sh I'm going to share the healings the Lord gave me right to this afternoon for, and, and we decree that every healing is touching whoever it's supposed to touch and they're receiving it in Jesus name. In Jesus' name. The, uh, the first one was, oh, well, I've got it right here. Let's do some scriptures first. Let's do some scriptures first. Because that, that um, th that's very powerful to decrease the scriptures before our healing. So, so I, I decree this over every one of us that ever watches this, or this part of MTM, that it is written by the stripes of him who raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in us and he who raised christ from the dead will also give life to our mortal earthly body bodies this is romans 8 11 i decree that into every life i decree into every life in the name of jesus that it is written surely you have borne our griefs our sickness and you carried our sorrows and pain yet we did esteem you stricken smitten of god and afflicted but you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, Lord Jesus, and by your stripes we are healed. I decree that into every one of our lives. I decree into every one of our lives that the Lord himself will take away from us all sickness and will, and will afflict us with none of the things that were in Egypt, that were known in Egypt, which represents the world. Thank you, Jesus. I decree that these signs follow every one of us that believe in your name, Lord Jesus. We will lay our hands on the sick and they shall recover. So I'm laying my hands right now on my phone. No, up here. And by his stripes, you are healed. I decree that in Jesus' name, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially in every other way. In Jesus' name. I decree that he sends his word, that it is written, he sends his word to each one of us and heals us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I just marked one. I just marked it. I went through and just marked the ones I thought were for tonight. I decree that he gives each one of us power to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing can by any means hurt us. In the name of Jesus, it is written. And I decree that into all of our lives. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I decree that we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, and we do not love our lives unto death. That means that you're willing to pay the price. You're willing to carry your cross, take up the cross and follow him. That means give up whatever you need to give up to follow him. I decree that we, that we bless the Lord. We're all blessing the Lord from our souls and we forget not all of his benefits who forgives all of our sins and heals all of our diseases. I decree this into all of our lives tonight by the power of the Spirit of Almighty God to confirm this with signs following. He, do, he redeems our life from destruction and crowns us with love and compassion. That I decree that into all of our lives now in Jesus' name. I decreed that he went, the, the Lord God himself, Jesus himself went about healing all those that were possessed of the devil, for God was with him. I decree that he's doing the same thing for all of us where the enemy's gotten in and afflicting us in any way that he, by the power of the Holy Spirit, is now delivering us and healing us. He's the same Jesus. He's the same Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now I want to then I'm gonna read these healing scriptures and then I'm gonna decree something else over us. Let me go back and get my little piece of paper. Or did I maybe I'll put it up here. I did. These are the healings, and I decree that they're going into everyone in my family, your family, and around the world that need them. The congestive heart failure, God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, is healing, congestive heart failure. Now I decree that. And the Holy Spirit will confirm it. 
I decree that thyroid disease is being healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the precious Holy Spirit will confirm that. that this is from the Lord. Muscular dystrophy. Somebody, some child, uh, maybe a young baby, I don't know. Muscular dystrophy is being delivered and healed now. That's the birth defect. Well, it actually can happen during birth or whatever. But anyway, the, in the name of Jesus Christ, that this whoever this is, is being healed now by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it will be confirmed with sign following. Someone's having laparoscopic surgery and you're worried, but God said to tell you it's coming out okay. You'll get a good report. Now, I don't understand this. I've never heard of this. Drones, something about drones and diseases. So God knows what that is, and somebody else may know what it is. But whatever it is, we ask God to anoint it and do whatever he wants to do with us. D-R-O-N-E-S. Or O-S. I'm not sure. Uh, diseases. And discs. Discs and people's backs are being healed right now by the power of Almighty God in Jesus' name. Discs are being healed now in Jesus' name. And the Holy Spirit's confirming it. Varicose veins, and that was very loud. Someone, it may be several people, because varicose veins are being totally healed. Uh, the large intestines are being healed. Not, it didn't say small, though. Specifically, the Holy Spirit, the large intestines are being healed now in Jesus' name. And the Holy Spirit will confirm this, because he's the one that gave it to me. Atrial fib is being reversed, and that person is being totally healed of atrial fib. Now, in the mighty name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Malaria is being healed. Asthma is being healed. And thrombosis is being healed. In the mighty name of Jesus, and Lord God, I thank you in Jesus' name that the Holy Spirit will confirm every one of these, send them around the world into homes, uh, uh, people wherever they're sleeping in the streets wherever they are God send this to whoever needs it and we thank you that the Holy Spirit is pressing it in and they are getting their, their healings right now the power of God in Jesus name now I want to decree this over all of us in Jesus name and I wish I could get y'all's messages up here uh, but I can't so it's okay I decree this on all of us and I bind it into us permanently in Jesus name I make mention of you in my prayers. I thank God that I'm making mention of you in my prayers. And I'm decreeing all of this into your life permanently, sealing it with the blood of Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to anoint it with life and, and, and release life into you. And um, that it goes deep into you. Yes, thank you, God, for your healing power. Yes. Okay, this is it. I decree. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you. I decree this is happening to you as I read it. It's being bound into you. The spirit of wisdom and revelation, the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints, that you know this, not just hear about it, you are knowing your experience in Jesus' name, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to you who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at the, his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and have put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. This is Ephesians 1, 16 through 23. And I thank God I decreed this into our lives, that we're going to know him in a deeper way than we've ever known him. That we're going to know the God of glory. The Father of glory has given us spirits of, a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that you are the cause and understanding to be enlightened. God, thank you. I decree that into all of our lives. Anybody that ever watches this, right from the throne room of God to you in Jesus' name. Now, I want to share, I'm going to share two or three testimonies before I go on. You know, tonight we're talking, last week we were, t we were sharing um, about... Uh, the anti we were like uh, the antichrist bondages deliverances 
testimonies. I did a kind of in-depth study, but I want to I want to keep going on this tonight. But first, I've got a few testimonies I want to share because it's going to help people understand what you thought's normal in life. It's not normal. We God paid the price for us to have sound minds to live in peace, and He the the blood covenant everything that Jesus Christ bought for us at Calvary on the cross belongs to every believer. But you have to go. You have to be willing to yield to it. Yield your heart to it, to go after him, to study his word, know his word, because the word is what brings truth and life to you. And so in Jesus' name, I'm just asking the Lord to, to bless you as you hear these few testimonies. I've got, I don't write down very many testimonies. I've prayed for probably a million people by now. Uh, just in one week, I could write a book, probably. Just in one week, probably. Or at least a half of one. But anyway, that I'm praying all the time. I mean, it's such an honor. To, but it's a, such an honor. But it's also um, it's weighty because I don't ever give up on people. And I, you know, I'm a person that sticks with it till the Lord says you've done all you can do, and then I keep blessing them and send them on their way. But here's what, here's the first one. I tried to just go through and pick out a few, and I'm going to read them because he's you know so that I can don't miss any. There is a lady that has taken 90 something drugs for mental illness. This is a true story. All the police in the town where she lived knew her because they were taking her to the hospital over and over and over. They could not help her. She came to the ministry, and a lady that bought her, maybe sometimes it's on here. This was years ago. And she was totally delivered. She, she had been in the hospital, I don't know how many times, and she tried to commit suicide, I don't know how many times. When she came that day, she had blood dripping down her neck where she just cut her neck the night before. And the only way her friend could get her to come was that she would buy her a pack of, uh, pack of I guess, beer or something. <laughs> so she came. And so, anyway, it's a long story, and a lot went on in her life. I can't even go into detail. So she'd been in the hospital, I don't know how many times. And the day she, the night before she tried to commit suicide, it was the blood, it was the blood of Jesus that totally set her free that day from alcoholism and drug addiction and mental illness. They had already told her there was no hope for her and they couldn't help her. her. And she'd been in a mental hospital, I don't know how many times, and, some, and it really doesn't matter. It was the blood that brought her peace. It was the blood of Jesus Christ that brought her peace. Now, she kept getting more deliverance after that day, and the Lord kept delivering her and healing of things that got her where, where she was, that caused her to be there. But way into her deliverance, this came up, and as a little girl, and this is where the trauma started. You have to go back, because she had anxiety, she had fear, she had depression, she had it all. She had a mental, she was literally mentally sick. She, a, a young, I think, if I don't remember the age and whoever was with me when they, when, when, when we asked this, they might remember. Young, maybe five years old, they would play, they jumped, there was a river there and they would jump in and play and all. She landed on a dead man, a dead body, and she screamed for days. And, you know, back then they didn't do a lot. So this is, that was, the, in deep, deep, deep down in her after after many months of ministry, that came out and released her. And the horror of that, what happened to her then, came out of her. So the Lord, the Lord, the trauma is what I want you to know. If you've been traumatized, he wants to go back and then get the pain of that trauma, the fear, the horror, whatever it did, the shock. So that you don't, so it doesn't come up as anxiety or panic attacks, because that's exactly what it does. But with her, there were so many things, it became mental illness with her. So that's, I wanted to share that with you, the, the tremendous gift of the Holy Spirit to go back and get the traumas out of your life. The psychiatrist could not help her. Medicine could not help her. She had every kind of help there was, and nothing could help her. Jesus Christ touched her life. There were other things that went on that caused all of this, but I'm telling you, the traumas, it were traumas that did it, and she was set free. The next one was, this was a beautician that I prayed for early on. 
the Lord takes you right where you are and honors what you know when you are moving out. This is what I was what I was say, what, trying to say here. I was brand new in all of this, but I I had such a compassion for people. So I heard she was having was winding up. I think this is the one that wound up in the mental hospital several times, and it was after she had babies because then they knew nothing about it. If not, there was a lady. I think this is her. Um. They didn't know anything about postpartum depression back then. I mean, they just thought you were mentally sick. Now they know what it is. It's your hormones are messed up. Well, anyway, let's see if this is her. The Lord takes you right where you are and honors what you know when you're moving out of compassion to help people. And that's exactly what he did with me, and he protected me. And this lady was right out of the mental hospital year, several years ago. And all this happened, when this happened, she was just right out of the mental hospital for like the third or fourth time. Um, all I knew then was to wash everything in the blood of Jesus, and I read you overcome Satan with the blood. So she had a mental problem, and the word says that he gives you a sound mind if you are a Christian. I went to her house, and I went alone. I didn't know about the scripture about when you have to pray, when you're praying for deliverance, you always have two people. Now, I'll pray with another Christian just alone, but if somebody doesn't know the Lord, I, you know, I'm going to get somebody here with me, or on the phone with me. Um. I was a baby Christian on, on what the teaching is about today. When I applied the blood, listen, this I'm, I'm speaking to people all over the world. It's the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. It has never lost its power to save, deliver, cleanse. It's the blood covenant we're in. Um, when I applied the blood, the peace, came, the peace of God came into her mind and into her emotions. And years later, the woman was still free, and she had been in and out of mental hospitals for many, many years. She was restored totally back to her home, back to her husband, and back to her children. In Jesus' name. Now, let's see. This is a big one. Uh, I prayed for a lady in this uh, area who had a very abusive husband who would not come to the house or to the or uh, to our ministry meetings he wouldn't come or come to one of the meetings i started praying for this lady and all of a sudden the whole the, and i was praying for her husband and i saw this spirit the, the holy spirit showed me her husband and he was two people i saw two people that looked exactly alike and one man walked out of him and i saw a man disappear that looked just like him in this vision this is a true story the god of all power it's the god of all power i said all i know is your husband is being delivered from another person because he was also new to me and that was on friday and on sunday her husband came in shaking he shook all day sunday and sunday night and i think the next day she told me and she held his arms. All she could do was hold his arms. And she said, she said to the Lord, I don't know if you are delivering him or taking him home, but whatever you're doing, do it. She said, well, this man was, he was so violent and full of rage. And that was what he left him. Well, I was shaking out of him. And she said he, he, he changed him. It really changed him. Oh, my goodness. It was a demonic spirit that had totally taken over his personality and looked just like him. She would have never known there was those demonic spirits because it, he, it was, he was one person, but there was really two, him and this other person that was him. He was, oh my, the Lord, the enemy, if you have anger and violence and all in you, you got to get delivered. It's the enemy and something, your pain from somewhere in life has caused this. Being rejected or not loved, not validated, thrown out, not caring, an orphan spirit, whatever it is. God wants to heal you. He's in the healing ministry. Whatever it is, he's in the healing ministry. Now, let's see. There's one or two more. I hope you're enjoying these. I hope you're enjoying them. And I, I, I see what da Alina's on here now and Jennifer. There's only two. Let me click this to see. Um, that's it. So let's keep going. This is, this is the occult. You know, we're talking about the occult and hacking to destroy your life. 
or witchcraft. And if it's ten, and somebody four generations back could have been in it, and you're reaping the curse of it. This is a big one too. And I tried to go through. I've got many, but the Lord just kind of showed me what people need to hear tonight. I want to tell you about a lady that works in this area that had gotten prayer everywhere. And she was a registered nurse, and we had a little something in common because of that. She came to us and had been married to a minister, and he divorced her. He went, he went off with another woman and divorced her. Everything in her life had always gone wrong. People who'd known her have told me this. No matter, because I didn't know her really. No matter how hard she tried, whatever she did always went wrong. Do you know people like this? She sat in the chair for prayer. She's an older lady. I, I think she was, I said, probably in her 50s. Well, now that's young. <laughs> so, oh, she couldn't find a nursing job. She'd been a registered nurse and had top jobs, and now she can't find a job when they needed nurses. I mean, everything went wrong with her. Her whole life was chaotic. She had children that loved her, and she loved them. But, well, what I saw when she sat in the chair, it looked like a Haitian woman. Now, you know, it, it, I'm not saying anything about it, but this is what it looked like. I'm not saying anything about the Haitians or anybody else. I'm just telling you what this looked like. Because you can find evil everywhere in all, all races of life. She had a turban around her head, and there was a big black pot. And she, this woman was stirring it, and she was laughing at, at the woman that was getting prayer. And there was steam coming out of that pot. It was hot. There was a fire on it. Now I'm watching this in the spirit, and I knew a curse had been put on her. It had been put on her years earlier. God broke that that day. Now listen, this is God broke that. This woman would have, who knows if she'd ever gotten free. Satan might as well know, okay. I knew a curse had been put on her. It had been put on her years early. God broke that that day. Now listen, Satan might as well know witchcraft is not working in this ministry. Because God shows it to me, and I know who's working in it. You better get your heart pure. Anybody, you bet, if you're in witchcraft in any kind of way, you better repent right now. Jesus could come today. Don't come before the anointing of the Holy Spirit knowing you have witchcraft in your heart because God will expose it unless you're coming to get free and willing to lay down your life to get free and your pride and the control that comes with that stuff. God will expose it. and In time, he will expose it. He's very merciful. He's waiting for you to get healed, to say, I need it. But he doesn't force anybody. The woman was innocent in all of it. Someone put witchcraft on her, and she did not know how to get free. She didn't even know it was witchcraft and didn't even know that it was witchcraft. This woman was so totally delivered that day. She got the best nurse. This is a true story, and there's some I'm sure on here that was with me. They heard this story, heard give this story. She got the best job in nursing, making more money than she had ever made. She has traveled. She's written songs and have them published. The Spirit showed me it was a, 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 a curse of defeat. The, who, the people know this woman, know the change that has come in her life. One session in the chair under the anointing can set you free. Or one session with, you can get free with you praying to the Lord, too. Ask him. Ask him if there's something going on that someone's, if you're living something. That's, she has no idea where that came from. This is an interesting one. It's different. Prejudice. Prejudice. If you have prejudice, get rid of it because it's going to cause you trouble. Somewhere down the road, you're going to get in trouble because God created everybody. And he loves everybody. He doesn't see skin color. He doesn't see anything. He watches the heart. Two years ago and a half, a beautiful young couple, well educated in the upper professional of society, came for ministry. And I love this because Jesus says, in this ministry, watching these videos over, over time, this from the top to the bottom, watching what God's doing. He, the Lord loves everybody. He's calling everybody back to him. Because the wife was so tormented, they came. He brought his wife because she was so tormented, and we started praying for her. We knew nothing about her, and we got prejudiced over her. The word prejudice. So, I'm speaking to you if you have, if you have prejudice against any any group, denomination, race, 
religion, anything, you better start repenting right now because it can cause you trouble. It may not be like hers, but it will cause you trouble. And little, because, because the truth is God loves you and he loves the person you're prejudiced about, whatever you're prejudiced about. Little did we know what we were getting into. That You know, you never know what's going to come up. It is so amazing how the Lord heals us and that how you see how the enemy works to destroy lives in so many ways. Now, listen, I, I'm wet because of the heat on me from the spirit. And my glasses now, these, are, these, these last five pair I got are new and they're sliding. They're still sliding. This precious, okay, here's what it was. This precious lady, if you are a redhead, you were below nothing. If you were blonde, you were even worse than that. <laughs> and I was a blonde sitting right there. Then now I'm kind of gray, a lot of gray. <laughs> if you had blue eyes, which I have, you were unacceptable. You had to have dark brown eyes and dark brown hair and white skin and everything else was never considered for marriage or otherwise. This is true. There's somebody on here tonight, I hope, that was with me when we prayed for this lady. Precious, precious people. Now, her husband bought it because she was tormented. That's how bound this one was. So her home was black and white, and everything had to be black and white. She had no other colors. Her clothes, everything. This is true. The power and principality over her life was prejudice. It was prejudice from her mother who had the same thing. This is a generational curse. And where it came from, who knows? So we, so it was prejudice from her mother and, and who had the same thing. So that Sunday, for the we prayed and broke all that off. And it all came out, all of it. That Sunday, is, uh, she went to church. For the first time in her life, she wore a peach dress, a peach colored dress to church. This woman was so tormented that when she married her husband, he was a redhead and her parents had nothing to do with her after that. Had, had nothing to do with them. You will not believe how the devil tangles lives up and makes such a mess of them. And it's not even the person, it's the enemy that does the destruction. Well, she's totally delivered. Her husband told me that he is protecting her, that he's protecting her from her mother. He is literally protecting her from her mother because that thing is so strong still on her mother. We've never heard. And it, listen, I, I pray for other, this is not one. I pray for other people just like this. I know some people right now, black and white, black and white. And they don't even realize it's a, a bond, some type of bondage. Now, there's nothing wrong with black and white. But if you're into this, this is beyond anything normal. Okay. He is literally protecting her and uh, because of the, how strong this spirit is. We've never heard anything like it then. I, but I have since then more than once. I tell you, she had to always live on the right side of the street. She had to live on the right side of the street, not the left side, the right side, depending on which way you were coming. I can't believe all the bondage that went with it. Satan had such a hold. Well, needless to say, Calvary redeemed her that night. And not only that, she was fueled with the glory of the Lord when she let all of that junk in her that she didn't even know was junk come out and go. Her child at the same time was, uh, was about, she had a child that needed healing. The Lord healed that child. I think that night, or the, just right after that, I guess. Like, this has been years ago since I wrote this. But whatever the child was healed out of it, it could not be taken care of medically. And the Lord healed her. When the mother got delivered, the child was healed. Or something like that. It, that was a, That's an incredible testimony. There's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of way the enemy worked to just bind us up so we can't enjoy life. And and for her husband to say she was so tormented that he would bring, you know take and find help for her, I think that's all the testimonies in here. I, don't do. I shared this a long time ago. I may, I brought mar, I marked it, so I've got to share it tonight. And it has to do with unforgiveness. If you have unforgiveness right now, just start asking God to forgive you, so you can receive. If you don't, He keeps you in prison. This was from a young lady that weighed 90 pounds and that came for prayer and, uh, and a demon spoke through her, a man's voice. She's like 90 pounds, fragile lady. 
and this this voice came out of her real rough. And y'all heard this say this. Sometimes I might get mixed up if I was there, if it's in person on the phone or, or the year or something. But the truth of the gut of the thing is really what happened. I don't forget that. I might forget all the little things around it. She said, I, this demon said to us, I caused cancer. I am going to kill her. And he said, I'm not going to leave her too. I killed her dead and I'm going to kill her. It's, this is a spirit talking to me and the lady helping me pray. And, and, it was, and he said, I'm bitterness. That's what he, he told us who he was. He says, I'm bitterness. And it, literally, we, can, we commanded to come out. It picked her up out of the chair, threw her across the room. I thought it was going to kill her. I mean, Lilith threw her way across. I was in a big house, and, it, and she landed right over. When her boot went flying through the air, well, she was halfway over there, up, and landed somewhere back over there. Oh, my goodness. Well, the thing came out of her. And so when she was able to, we went and picked her up and got her back over where we were and put, put her in the chair and because we couldn't catch her because she went out so fast. I mean, it was like split. It was talking to us, and, and we were telling that it was coming out of her. It wasn't, and she was not going to cause her cancer. So, and and listen, that thing was screaming as it was coming out of her. It was screaming, and you know Jesus had one. He told her, "Be quiet," and it said it. It, it did something. It made, it, I think he said it, it screamed or something, and they thought it was, the people thought it had died because it was on the floor. But anyway, we got to talk to her, and she said her father had died with cancer. That he was in the occult. He was in the occult. A lot of hatred, bitterness. And it had come, she was innocent in it, but it had come down in her. I just on Facebook, now this was years ago, she has a church. I knew she had become a minister, a street minister. She was ordained and became a street minister. Little 90 year old, perky, full of life. And she thought that she literally thought she was going to die because she didn't know what it was, but she knew something was in her. She couldn't stand. It was more than she could stand. Her nerves, everything about her was falling to pieces. God rescued her just in time. And so she has a church now. I just heard, I saw it on Facebook. Oh, I'm so excited how the Lord takes and lets me hear things, good things. that I, It hasn't been for nothing. God, it hasn't been for nothing. Laying your life down in compassion to be, bring healing to people will always, the Lord will let you hear things years later to let you know that you had some part, he used you to have some part in, may, in helping them get where they are today. And I am so grateful for that opportunity. I am, I'm just so thankful. The Lord is so good. This is uh, the occult. Listen to this if you have children in school because it's more pertinent today than when this happened. It was a 19-year-old girl, beautiful girl. She was very popular in high school. And she and she had a nervous breakdown. She literally had a nervous breakdown. Went into the mental hospital. She graduated ahead of her class. She started having mental problems. Uh, uh, just immediately, fear of every kind hit her. They had her medicated. Later on, she married a high school sweetheart, but there was a lot that went on between that. She couldn't go to many places because of these fears, and she tried to commit suicide, too. Now, she had been above nothing, and all of a sudden, all this stuff starts happening to her. And I didn't know them. Someone told them about me, and, and I set an appointment. They came to the house, and I don't know who helped me pray. Linda Jackson helped me for a long period, but there, was a, um, there were other people that helped me uh, for long periods too before I met Linda but then she was with me and still is and she's so precious and so faithful God bless her she's she's like a got gold crowns on her hanging off of her she is so precious the way she's still with me through all all kind of things with people and churches and everything thank you Lord for this precious person that's so dedicated to the Lord well anyway let me tell you about this girl she comes for prayer, she sat in the chair, and immediately I saw three girls putting curses on her in high school. I literally, the Lord took me there and let, and let me see it. So I tell her this. I said, they put some kind of witchcraft on you. They, she said, they hated me. And they were in high school. And uh, she said, they were jealous of her because she was very popular and she was very smart too. And they were virgin. They were her friends on top of this, but there were three of them. 
I saw these bands around her head. There was a band, like a, a band around, and there were stones all the way around her head. And each stone was a different fear they had put on her to torment her mind so she would lose it or kill herself. And actually, that's where she was when she found me and found not found my place, and the Lord did it. Jesus gets all the credit for all this. And the root of all of it was jealousy. And the Bible says where there's jealousy, there's every form of kind of evil. If you're a jealous person, God, you better fight with the Lord, fight with the devil, cry to the Lord, you hang on to him till you get that out of the roots out of you. It will do nothing but destroy you and destroy other people and make you miserable. And really people that are jealous, there's something back there that caused it. There was something, insecurity or, or not feeling, I don't know. You know, God knows what causes it. So unless it was handed down on you, you'll say evil things that brings destruction on people. So be careful and watch what comes out of your mouth and start crying out to God to deliver you from That was the occult. And today that's more prevalent in schools than ever than it was when, when this happened. So what time is it? It's already 9.30. Well, let me, let me keep going here. You know, we've been talking about witchcraft, witchcraft and the occult and getting delivered. But it, it, the deliverance ministry is not just for witchcraft and occult. It's to get the thing where you've been beaten down as a child, where you've had traumas as a child, where you've been rejected as a child, where you've been incest, where you've been raped, where you've been beaten on, where you... Listen, I've got testimonies where, people, where kids were locked up in the basements, in closets with no food. Um, there's one testimony right here. A, a young girl came for prayer that was having a, a mental problems, didn't want to live. And it went back to where her dad locked her in a basement with no windows, put her mother's nightgowns on and did incest for, for years. And God healed her. But if the Holy Spirit hadn't come in, this woman would have killed herself as an adult. God wants to set his people free. But also he wants to set you free from all the occult because that opens the doors for every kind of evil. You may enjoy it for a time. It may answer you and give you answers. But in the end, and it may be true, but it's from the devil. And if you ever get negative from anybody, break it. Break it. Get somebody to agree with you and break it. Dreams or even a prophet giving you negative words. If the, some, the Lord warns you through dreams, he'll warn you through prophets. But you break it. You don't leave it there. You have to go to war. If you don't, it's going to happen. Break it. And just today, a young man told me he had had bad dreams about America and what's happening. And I, and I told him this. I said, we all see this and where everybody's breaking everything they can off of America. That God that redeems and delivers America back to where it's stable again. It's just not, it's unstable right now. And, and we just ask God to have mercy on us. Forgive us for our sins and to heal America and heal our land. And give the leaders wisdom, his wisdom. In Jesus' name. So I want to talk. People don't understand about generational curses. So I want to just go in this just a little bit. And uh, because we're going to have a lot of time. I want time to pray. And I'm tell you what we're breaking off of people tonight. Is, um, you know, we break one thing off of people every week. And I wrote it. I got it. I'll have to find it. Because I think it was struggling. But I've got to find it. Because uh, I have to do what. If you're struggling in any area, we're going to break a struggling spirit, the, the, the bondage of struggling in Jesus' name. So I, what I want to do, talking about uh, generational curses and how they work. And this is from Proverbs 26. And it says like a, a, a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse does not come. And, but if it's deserved, it will come. And let me tell you about these swallows. They travel thousands of miles. And they know how to get come back. They come straight. It's like radar. They know how to come back. So you can't get away. It's a generational curse. It's an iniquity somewhere back in your bloodline that was never repented of. It was left open. And so this, in the Bible, it's, there's a lot about this in the Bible to the third and fourth generation. And if it hits anywhere, then go more third and fourth generations. And this is what, um, I want to read what it says. Um, it can cause depression. 
because it's, it is a curse and it can find you. I don't care if you are a million miles away from where it occurred. They know how to find you. You're dealing with powerful kingdom with great principalities and powers and ruling spirits that's ruling all these smaller, smaller, less powerful ones, the networks down here to mess us up. So it says it, it's generational bondage. It could be on the mother, the sister, the brother, or me, and it's called generational curses. It is an uncleansed iniquity. Listen to this. So that's why we go back and repent for everybody and ask the Lord to forgive them. Not only us do we ask them to forgive, we ask the Lord to forgive them also. It's an uncleansed iniquity. Let's see if I can see anybody's names over here. Nobody's names over there. So anyway, that has been handed down from one generation to the next, uh, to the third and fourth generation. And uh, it, it can increase in power and strength. And it can affect anyone in that bloodline, wherever it decides to light. And it, and the cause is someone's iniquity was never repented of. So if you've done things, like I was talking about this man with these emotional affairs, if he doesn't repent, and he did, if he doesn't repent, that's open to go down on his children down to third and fourth generation. It's an iniquity. You have to repent. And, uh, and Joshua 6.26 is a Jericho curse. And in 2 Samuel 1, 21, there's David curse. In 2 Samuel 13 or 17, Amon rapes Tamar. It just went on and on and on, the, the sexual stuff. Noah's sons were cursed for not covering him. That was Genesis 9, 1. The one that didn't cover him, that was a curse to go down on him. And some of them forever, so we can break them, though. God pronounced curses with Adam and Eve. Nahum in 2 Kings, it was sin of leprosy. I mean, it, it, the Bible's full of this, but we have, in the new covenant, we have power of all the power of Satan, but we've got to take it, in, and it's through repentance and redemption. It's the redemption that the Lord paid for at Calvary <coughs> for us. We've had a lot of um, responses from last week. I don't know if you read about the lady that went back and listened to one of the uh, prayers, breaking something, and she listened to it, and the Lord pulled up in her gluttony, and she was totally delivered. Well, she told me this week, she decided to go back and listen to him again, where I went, you know, broke, and I'm going to do that tonight, we're struggling with, over all of us, anybody ever watching this, and our loved ones. She said she went back and listened to it three times, and the Lord started pulling all kinds of things up out of her. And I think it, I think it was, uh, I forget, if she's on here, she, she, you know, I, oh, let's see. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, she, it, it's you can go back and look because it was, she put it. She, I sent it as a, out as a testimony. I told you which one to listen to. We're going to do it tonight. You, can, She said, and I said, I need to tell this. And I do tell it. When I'm praying, you pray out loud for you. You agree for you and your loved ones. Do it out loud. If you agree with anything, say amen. I agree. And I bind it into my family. You've got to get in here. She said she prayed. Uh, and also um, another lady is on here. She said, I prayed with you, Linda. I pray, and, and, and I know she's only because one of the names popped up. She said, I, I listened to what you said. I, I think she backtracked it. No, I don't know. How and she said, I prayed with you. And as I was praying with you, I was being delivered. So you've got to be in there. with. You've got to get your heart involved, your spirit involved. These are really can happen to you, whatever you need. They've been incredible deliverances. I've had people tell me that... Um, it's, it, it, there, there are all kind of things are hitting people and they're realizing and the Lord and they're praying and God's delivering them. He, This is happening. That's why I'm back on here tonight. You know, sometimes I think, but then when I read what I just read, there was 6,000, almost 7,000 people that have followed this in the last few days and 200 something new likes or new followers that, that came up this week. I mean, and these new countries, I can't give it up. And if, you know, if I, Dave said, I pray and agree with your president, 
you, you do you get you it's serious i'm not just saying some this stuff works i I've, I've moved in this for 50 something years and it works it changes lives it changes lives it redeems us back for everything jesus paid the price at calvary for it redeems us back in jesus name I want to decree this over us. So the Lord told me just to decree things. And, and y'all, you say I'm agreeing when I'm doing it. And say amen, I want this. I de it is written, Lord, I decree this on everyone that ever watches this and their loved ones. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cried, Abba, Father. That means that we know him as Daddy Father, the spirit of adoption. And I, this, uh, this adoption, we have received the spirit of adoption. This is what you have received. I looked up the definition so you can know. Say, God, I, I bind that into me, the spirit of adoption. Every bit of it. Because here it means. It's illegal. It's legal. It's a permanent transfer. You have been legally permanently transferred into Jesus Christ and everything that he has for you. It also means it's a, a fact of choosing to take you into into his him to be his and uh there was another and to bring you in as if you were his own this is just for this isn't even like for bible this is what adoption means and it means that in the kingdom you are we are his and right now i decree that everybody is going to experience the spirit of adoption and when you pray you know he hears you because she is the high priest of your confession he is the one that came to deliver you from all destruction he is the one that sent his word and heals you he is the one that makes your crooked places straight he is the one that perfects all that is lacking in you he is the one that gives you power over all the power of satan and nothing can by any means hurt you it is written he is the one that gives you peace that passes all understanding it is he that gives you spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ jesus it, it is he that gives you understanding and comprehension in the things of the spirit of god it's yours in the name of the lord jesus christ i decree it is going into you now in the name of jesus the promises everything he bought when he took you in is his you are his and no one and he will never leave you no one can ever take you he he is ownership of you you are his and these things belong to all of us and i decree them into me and to all of my loved ones in the mighty name of jesus and i thank the holy spirit for confirming the word with signs following in all of our lives i decree it in the name of Jesus, the power of Almighty God be on these promises. The power of Almighty God come to you and to me and to all of us to, to, to correct whatever's gone crooked and to put, get us back on the right path, the path of righteousness for his name's sake. It's the paths he prays that we'd be in paths of righteousness for his name's sake, not for ours, so that for his name's sake, so that when people hear his name, they say they know our lives that we're living the we're walking in paths of righteousness for his name's sake it says he said that not me i ask god to confirm that into all of our lives that we are walking in paths of righteousness for your name's sake lord jesus to bring glory back to you our lives bring glory back to you in jesus name and then i decree that it is written god you have not given anybody any of us a spirit of fear because of all this stuff coming on the world that it is written, God has not given any of us a spirit of fear, but love, power, a sound mind. I decree that into all of us in the name of Jesus, that we will have sound minds till we go out of here at 110 or 20, whatever it is, or go out in this way. We'll always have our long-term and short-term memory in the mighty name of Jesus. It is, uh, it is a promise for us in the name of Jesus because we are his, and in him is a sound mind and no fear, uh, that we won't have fear. We, we bind fear right, that we keep our eyes on Jesus. You've got to keep focused on him because there's a lot of stuff going on that would try to take you away from walking in the spirit in Jesus' name. I, de I decree this on us, 1 Timothy 4.11. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And this is the Antichrist. This is the witchcraft. This is the occult. It all comes to manipulate. 
to to control it it it's it's all and to, it, Satan's plan is to take in this whole world under the under his cover and out of the out of the hands of that's what he did in heaven and his warfare is to get all of us out of here and to take us out it says it, the, the spirit speaks expression that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I decree none of us will, this will ever happen to any of us. I decree that God's doing a work in us, that he's burning his life in us, his love in us, his compassion, his very life breath into us, that none of us can ever yield to these, that we have great discernment that not anyone will ever go, uh, go after deceiving spirits and doctrines of devils. In the name of Jesus, God, deception is real. And it happens, you know, I ask you to deliver us from all deception. Give us keen ears and eyes to see and hear in the spirit. And then we run. When we get a warning, we run. In the name of Jesus, I decree that none of us will fall for all of that. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And I'm gonna close with this, and then we're gonna. I'm gonna go with about that struggling to break off. Last week I mentioned this, and I didn't get it clear because then you need to understand this: how how some of these demons work, and how how clever they are. And I was, and because I'm sharing this, a lot of marriages are falling apart because of this, and they have no idea what's happened to them. And I was telling you about that lady in church that we always sat on the back row and there was a, a, a young lady that was very pretty that was stood in the aisles, up, up, always there. We got there early because we had fought some of our grandchildren or whatever. And she, and she was standing, she was always talking to this older man and her head was going back and forth like this, but her eyes never left his eyes. And you could sit back there and just watch this. She was smiling. She was a, a very attractive lady. And I told you, somehow or another, and I watched this, and if she went out of the sanctuary, he would follow her. I don't know how this happened. Somehow or another, she called for prayer, because she had heard, I didn't really know it, but she had heard that I had a ministry of prayer. And, and she wanted to commit suicide, in fact. And I didn't know any, really nothing. Well, she came, and I think Joe Davis came in, Linda Jackson and Shelby Blankens, my husband. And we prayed for her. And we broke a, and the Lord showed me a cobra spirit with the head going like this, just like her head did. And her eyes, and this this cobra was just eyes were fixed and it was going just like this. Well, what I didn't tell you was when that when her head was going like this, she was putting that man in a hypnotic state. And that's why when he she believed he was following her. And let's see. I I uh, I want I want to make sure she bewitched him and put him in a state, and he had no idea what had happened to him. He I mean he just like he was following her. Well, she went to my house and got prayer, and in the end she called me. Now maybe she even told me that night. I don't know if they some of them helped me pray or on here. I believe. Um, she told I think this was a telephone call. I called to check on her, and she said that since a little girl. She didn't have a father's love. So in her mind, she's going to have an older man because then that would make, give her uh, the love she needed and it would be like a father to her. And she was totally delivered. Now, I didn't know this. She said, my husband had left me. And now where our marriage is getting back together and we're moving out of the state. That was the last I heard from her. Well, I thought I need to pray for this man. So I started praying and literally this is what the Lord showed me her with a, like a bird cage and he was in it and everywhere she went, she was carrying him with her. I broke it off him. He'll never know that. But this is a true story and this really happened. Two marriages were saved and no, who, no, no telling what else was happened because of that. God is so good and he's so, He's, we just need, we need to be aware we're in two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. And the devil's working anywhere he can. And the word of God is so critical that the believer gets the word of God in them. That that's what the Lord, the Holy Spirit works with is the word. Now, I was going to go on about uh, the last days and about the beast. From Revelation 2 Thessalonians 2.13 is where Paul, and now that's in, uh, Thessalonica is in Greece now. Um, 
And I just read that. Now, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the, our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together unto him, let no man, and I underline, underline that, let no man, I'm, I'm speaking to all of you, get this, deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come except there come a falling away first. Now, this is, watch the falling away, because it's going to happen, and it's mentioned several times, even in Revelation. Except they come a fallen away first, then the man of sin will be revealed, the son of perdition. And actually, um, this will be, you know, the Antichrist. But it's, there's a many Antichrist, people that are Antichrist. But they have to know Christ. They have to know truth to be anti. So this is where we'll go next week because it said, let no man deceive you by any means. It's going to be a great falling away, and we already seen that. People, I mean, they, people, you know, I don't, falling away in Greek, I, this is what I'm going to tell you, and then that's as far as I'm going to go tonight. We'll pick it up next week. It would means rejection of the revealed truth. That's what falling away means in Greek, literally, means rejection of revealed truth. That means that they've known truth and they fell away. And they will fall away, and then they'll, they, they're the ones that are going to fall away. And that's the beginning of the end. Let no man deceive you before the coming of the Lord. Because there'll be a falling away of, of who we thought were believers. And this Antichrist is called a, a man of lawlessness, the son of perdition, and Antichrist, another thing. But, you know, uh, Judas was called the son of perdition, too. There's only two times that's mentioned, and that's uh, with Antichrist and Judas. And, and something interesting that, you know, I thought years ago in the charismatic movements, how we came into all this, thank God for the full gospel businessmen fellowship, because that's where we learned about all this, about not all this, but learned it, about the gifts of the Spirit and being baptized in the Spirit um, uh, uh, Derek Prince, Charles Simpson, and Bob Mumford was, uh, were just the uh, three of the very top leaders. And uh, so as the years went on, they started taking like, Charles Simpson actually was in our home and, and, and shared with my whole, our group we had in our home. But um, I, I, we, kind of, we followed all three of them. And uh, Derek Prince went into a deliverance ministry as he went along. You know, they all started out like we did, but th these were men that were called to be leaders. Charles Simpson was a Southern Baptist minister. And um, so a lot of things, my basic things that I learned, first of all, to be baptized in the Spirit, and that there were gifts of the Spirit, that was all, and that there was a devil and demons. I didn't know any of that. No. So they introduced us to all that, and I thank God for it. Then after that, the Lord taught me most of the things by just praying with people. The Holy Spirit taught me so much by praying with people and the Word, because it would line up with the Word, and a lot of it. And he let me start seeing in the Spirit very early. And it, First of all, I didn't know what in the world was happening, and then I realized it was corresponding to whatever they were talking about. You know, it took, the Lord is so good. He is so good to teach us and train. Don't ever be afraid to start using. Just say, Lord, this person needs help. Show me how to pray and start praying. Don't ever forget, just pleading the blood will deliver you. Just saying the blood of Jesus Christ, I like, oh, but now, you know, what we're going to go into uh, right now, and the first thing I want to do is 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 to break and command all struggling. You can be struggling financially. You can be struggling uh, with your children. You can be struggling uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, uh, spiritually, wherever the struggle is, relationship-wise, uh, struggling in your job, struggling with uh, getting to where you know you're supposed to go, whatever it is, whatever demonic spirit is holding you back, we're coming against it in Jesus' name. And I'm going to take a drink of tea, and I get so... So dry. My mouth is so dry. Talking. I don't have, I don't see anybody's name, anything. I just thank God you've stayed with me. So we're going to pray for struggling. Thank God to expect miracles tonight. And, you know, you can put something else in here. If you want to come back and, and you know, get this and put what you know you need deliverance from, like, um, Hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, anything like that. 
you can put that in but right now we're going and if the lord gives me something else while we're doing this we're going to do it but at the end if i don't do it now before i go to sleep tonight i commit every one of these things that we have bound back to their master back to jesus christ to deal with whenever he wants to but they're permanently bound there to the lord does what he wants to do with them i do that with this because you know that way the lord is they're back in the lord's hands because they're, every enemy is going to be his footstool before he comes back. He's going to, every enemy will be his footstool. The Bible says that. So we thank the Lord for that. I want to thank the Lord for you, each one of you. And, you know, it says there's 21 watching. Well, when I get up in the morning, there'll be 200 or maybe, sometimes it's two something, sometimes it's one something, but it's up there. And I noticed tonight, I believe there was right at 400 from last week. But that's just my thing because... Um, Facebook keeps a total like I, I don't even know how I don't know how they keep up with anything, but we we are growing we're expanding we're up to seven thousand followers seven thousand something seven seven thousand something likes so we're really really growing that's on that's on masters that's on masters touch ministry then on the m just MTM we have six hundred and fifty something there and. Um, then over on my friends, just uh, Facebook friends, I have 5,000. And then Linda Blankenship, I don't know how many Sundays there. I don't have any idea. But the, the Lord, it's really expanded. And actually, Facebook is wanting to um, start advertising under my videos or something. They sent me something twice a day. And I didn't click on it because I don't know anything about any of all this. So... We just give it to the Lord, and I'm just thanking him that he is bringing people in. And I want to take right now, as the people come in from around the world, to let you know how much we love you, our hearts of you. Even though we're in America, we are praying for you, that God meets every one of your needs. And, and the uh, pastor that has uh, the tribal ministry in Nepal and in um, India, that uh, Pakistan, I forget, it's on my first sheet. I I called his name out, and I, you know, y'all heard it. We ask God to bless that ministry to explode with the anointing of the Spirit with miraculous miracles, miraculous miracles on that young pastor that literally sent a message to me that he coveted our prayers for him as he ministers in these two countries. And then we pray for um, the young man that became a Christian this week over Messenger, and we, we ask God to multiply it to thousands of souls being saved. And right now, if you're watching and you don't know Jesus, just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for everything I've done wrong. Come into my heart. Come into my life. I need you. Forgive me for my sins. Fill me with the Spirit. Fill me with your Spirit, Lord Jesus. I want to know you. I need you. I'm desperate for you. Talk to him from your heart, and you will receive him right now. Just do that. Welcome him in, and then get you a Bible, some kind of Bible, and start reading it. A holy Bible, not any just kind of Bible, but the holy Bible that tells you about Jesus. And, and read it. And I ask God to bless your life. We're claiming thousands of souls into the kingdom through these videos. And we'll never know. This young man I know because he... He texted me and wanted to know Jesus, desperate to know him, and he's born again. So we are so thankful. Thank you all for praying. But we want the foreign countries to know we, we're joining with you in prayer, and our hearts are with you, and we are praying for you. We're praying God meets your needs, those that need food, those that need clothing, those that need homes, those that need jobs. God, that the God is sending holy war and angels to defeat the enemies that have robbed from you and bring life into you. If you belong to Jesus, he can, we, we plead the blood of Jesus over your destiny, over all of your destinies, our destiny. I plead the blood of Jesus over every one of our destinies that we get where God created us to be. And we, it's not how we start, it's how we finish. Are we going to finish running or we're going to finish dead? Now, get up and get busy. You've got life breath in you. Start moving forward. God didn't keep you here for nothing. It's a time. It is a time like no other time. If you can't do anything else, you can get on your knees. Or if you can't, if you can't because of knees or something, sit in your chair and pray for everybody you know that needs prayer. That God anoints them and moves them out because you can't to do what you would call to do because you can't. Do just get active in the spiritual realm. 
in Jesus' name. So now, Father, we're going to, again, struggling. Father, in Jesus' name, uh, because I've asked you today, Lord Jesus, to give me exactly what to break, and this is what came to me, was struggling. And anything else you want me to break over, over everybody, just give it to me. I'm, I'm here. I'm empty. And I just thank, thank you, Lord Jesus, for what I did get to share tonight. Thank you that the Word of God will not return void, but will accomplish all that you have sent it to do. I thank you for the fire of God on it. I thank you for the uh, the force of the Holy Spirit, the the penetrating force of the Holy Spirit that gets to the depths of the souls of people tonight, everywhere, all over the world, in Jesus' name. Thank you for these young men. God, we thank you for these young men. We ask you to multiply that by the thousands, bringing them in and so that they can get their lives straight and on path and on fire for you, Lord, and in love with you, in love with you. Each person, each young man, God, tonight do a new thing in their life. Start speaking to them, blessing them. And if they have having dreams, if they're negative, God, remind them to, to break them. Get someone to agree with them. Broken, it can never happen. And, Lord, just start blessing them with good things in Jesus' name. So, Lord, now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come into the throne room. We come and we submit ourselves to you. And we submit everyone that ever watches this that's struggling, that there's a demonic spirit of struggling in their life that is stopping, hindering, harassing. We we submit ourselves to you. We submit the struggling demonic kingdom to you. We bind up the principalities. We bind the strong man. We bind all network and demonic spirits under this struggling um, that's going on in all these lives. And we ask the Holy Spirit to be everywhere in our, our, every life right now, bringing deliverance. We bind you up struggling. We destroy you. We pull you up, we pull you down, and we pull you up. And we command you to come out of their lives now. We command you to come out of every part of their life, every part of their loved one's lives, their children, their mates. Every, we break struggling, the kingdom of struggling. We declare and decree that you are bound permanently. Broken, your powers are broken. Any iniquity, they open the door for it. We repent and we ask for forgiveness. I, we ask you to forgive too, Lord. And we close those doors permanently and we release the blessings of Abraham, the blessings of Calvary, the, the blood covenant blessings into all these lives. We're struggling as we apply the blood covenant, the promises of Almighty God for deliverance in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we bind these things. We send them back to the master. We bind everyone on back to the master permanently in the mighty name of Jesus, permanently in the, you come out and you leave now in the name of Jesus. Every struggling demonic kingdom is bound permanently. Everybody's agreeing with me in the mighty name of Jesus. We command you to come up and come out of their lives. We bind the strong man over it. We render you powerless forever and bound back to your master, back to the master in the mighty name of Jesus. We pull you down in your networks with you off of every life and every home and everything to bite their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We lose freedom. We command freedom to flow. Freedom in the mighty name of Jesus. Freedom in every struggle place that the devil is wiped out, totally demolished right now by the power of Almighty God in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the war and angels that are standing guard there to get people delivered now, get homes delivered, get lives, children delivered. In the name of Jesus, breakthroughs everywhere there's a struggle. We command us breakthrough. We command a breakthrough. We break through. We break through. We break through. We break through in every life in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I command you to go, devil. I command you to come up and go. I command you to come up and go. And you come down and you go with them. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus, you build. People are getting delivered. I'm seeing them leave. This is a permanent deliverance. Breakthroughs are coming right behind you. Right through where you've been. I release God Almighty's promises. I release the word of God. I release the Holy Ghost. I release the blood of Jesus. I release the Holy War and angels to bring in a flood of deliverances. Now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you come up. You come up and come out in the name of Jesus. You come up and you come out. You come up quietly, peacefully, and you come out and leave in the mighty name of Jesus. We've, we've, 
command you out. We close every door, permanently closed. We dedicate every area back to the Lord Jesus Christ and cleanse with the blood of Jesus. We ask for cleansing of this part of your life, permanently and forever with the blood of Jesus. We dedicate it back to the Lord Jesus Christ to fill that part of you, that part of your life with the Holy Spirit, with the Spirit of God, with the Word of God, with the, with the gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, and it's a permanent deliverance. No demon can come back. That demon can't come back. No demon can ever come back to take his place. Not ever these doors are closed and it's dedicated all of that but are you the airways are clear this is a permanent deliverance in the mighty name of jesus we're in agreement and where two or more is agree is touching anything it is done by our father in heaven in the mighty name of jesus and we believe and we know we're believing and we're receiving man the we we bind you back permanently back to your master permanently you're all bound there to jesus and jesus that get dedicate you back to the lord jesus christ to do with you whatever he wants to but you are permanently released from these loved ones everywhere all around the world all around the world i decree you are being set free in jesus name that the mighty god of paul and john and matthew mark all of them that mighty god of power great power is delivering you delivering you now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus <coughs> Excuse me, I got too dry. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We unlock doors. <coughs> I guess I'm never going to win by. <coughs> I got locked doors. We command those doors to come. We command the locks to come on. Satan, I'm, I'm speaking to you. I bind this strong man of locks. I command locks to fall off of doors. I command locks to fall off of doors. All the doors of anybody, anybody involved in this. We break your locks. We break your power. We destroy it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you are destroyed. Locks fall off. Doors open in the name of, open. Open, I said. Open in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's no other name. His name. All power is given to him in heaven and earth. And he's given it to the church. We command those doors to open. We command that we don't care if the locks stay on. The locks are going out with you right now. Open. Open. Lord, take them off the hinges. Get them out of there. And, oh, set, the, set your people free. Lord God, thank you for setting your people free. Thank you. Those doors are gone. And you're moving through, you're moving through, you're moving through your obstacles, you're moving through your struggles, you're moving through, start moving, and believe God's delivering you, I ask for the power of Almighty God to be on this prayer, and that there'll be mighty results, in the name of, I dedicate it to Jesus, to the power of the Holy Spirit, to bring glory to Jesus, glory back to Jesus for what he's doing. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name. No locks can stay anywhere. that are melt by the power of the fire of God. Melt. Crumble. Destroyed in the name of Jesus. No name like the name of Jesus. Lord God, I thank you for that deliverance. I, I send that deliverance into every life. Every life. Whether it's mental, financial, uh, physical, spiritual, uh, relationship, we don't care. Every life that's struggling, wherever it is, you're being set free now in Jesus' name. And I, I, I want to hear testimonies to give people hope. And I need the ones receiving. Walk in it a few days and then put it out. Don't put your name, put your country you're from or state you're from or initials. But get it to me so I can share it because it's changing lives when you say what the Lord's doing. And he is doing things. <clears throat> I thank the ones that have been sharing their testimonies. There's a lot going on in a lot of lives in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, I thank you for healing. We're, we're thanking you for healing now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we bind up every spirit of infirmity. We bind the strong man of infirmity, of sickness, disease, afflictions plagues like COVID and cancer. I call them plagues because they're killing, it's killing to, you know, it's, I don't know how you diagnose a plague, but 
when you see this many people being touched by it, you have to believe it's something. We bind up every sickness, disease, affliction, infirmity that the enemy is trying to put on anybody uh, uh, in, in this family that's been joining together here. We break it. We break it off of you. We command you to be, that it is written by the stripes of Jesus Christ. You are healed, and we command to, to release you. We pull it up by the roots and we cast it back to the pits. And God, I can't do it. I'm giving it. I'm asking you to do the miraculous tonight. Miraculous move of your spirit. Miraculous healings. Miraculous deliverances. Mi miraculous Lord of setting people free from things that they can't be, get free of themselves. They need miracles. I thank you for miraculous miracles, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let's see, Lord. Just give me anything you want to break, and I'm right here. We go back, and everybody watching again, Any back into the generations, any iniquity that was never repented of. Lord, we're repenting all the way back in Adam and Eve for every iniquity. We forgive, and we forgive the person. And we ask you to forgive them, Lord, so that it's washed clean by the blood of Jesus. And we close every door permanently to that iniquity or anything some of us have done that could be handed down. You need to do that for yourself and your children. We break it and we close the door and we release now in the place the blessings of Abraham, the blessings, everything that was bought for us at Calvary. We release it and, and, and we release it and ask the Lord to God to anoint it with the anointing of the Spirit that brings life into our lives and into our families in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Any kind of culprits. We we destroy culprits. The Lord just gave me the word culprit. We bind, we bind up all cul culprits in all lives. And we bind them permanently back to the pits. Permanently. And we close every door. In Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for the miraculous move of your Spirit. We thank you for your healing power. We thank you for your love. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. Lord, I ask you right now by the power of Almighty God to let the presence of Almighty God fall on everybody. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want to tell you that at quarter to eight, and I think we got on at 10, uh, 10 till eight tonight, till 8.15, Fred and Tracy Norris are doing beautiful worship. But you have to type in Master's Touch Ministries Worship. Type it in and get on there. I think only, only maybe six of us. But now last week it was slow too. But during the week I noticed I had 156 on one side and a whole bunch of us. So there's a lot are watching them. But they need to see people clicking in. Because it's beautiful. I know there were several that watched tonight, but not very many. And they go to a lot of trouble. This worship music is beautiful. It's Master's Touch Ministries Worship. And just type it in. It's right here on, it'll come up on your computer, just like I am. It comes right where I am. And then they go off. And tonight, uh, Justin played I Have Great Thou on his keyboard. And it was absolutely beautiful also. So... That kind of feel, but then that filled in a few, you know, uh, two or three or four minutes that we have from, they go from quarter to eight to quarter after eight. And then he did his little piece and it was just all of it. It's just so anointed in the presence of the Lord. Just, it was on me. Thank goodness, because what happened after that with all this just really was something else. Now, all I'm seeing is Jennifer Mims over and over. Oh, Dave Shannon. Yes, we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And that is so true. And we love not our lives unto death. Alina, Jennifer, Marilyn. I'm, I, I can pull them up from down. Christina, Heather, honey, we're so good. And Jennifer, Allison, Linda Jackson, Dawn, Brian, Christina, I'm so glad I'm getting some of you. Um, thank you, Jesus. Dave, Lori, honey, there's more than 21. So many are helped by this wonderful ministry. Pray. Thank you, Lori. It, it's listen, um, you can't I can't look at numbers anymore because Facebook is is doing better. Like they didn't for a long time. They weren't. I, they were telling me on one side how many new people like this and was following, it. but then in the total number it never changed. In fact, it's going down instead of up. I think I mentioned that. Well, it's been months. Well, they finally updated it, 
and I showed it to Logan, there's like almost 6,000 6, and something likes and 6,000 something followers in this video right here, these videos. So it's, it's very, it's very powerful what's going on. And we're not getting the ones around the world. You know, I know like um, the Pakistan people are Facebook's not counting them yet, and uh, the uh, they get Nepal, but there was that Ivory Coast, uh, different from the one that's. Oh, oh, David, thank you, thank you, Heaven, thank you, David, for sharing, for sharing, and we'll come back next week, and we're going to we're going to look a little bit about. Um, the Antichrist, and and this is to prepare us because we're living in the end days. We can't fool around, and and I, I don't know, you know, how close we are to the second coming, but uh, all this stuff with one world. I mean, it's just I don't know. Now I don't know a whole lot. You know, I told you, you need to check everything out yourself in the scripture because I don't want to deceive anybody and lead you astray. But as far as deliverance. I am, you know, this is all lines up with the word of God and it's changing lives and it's, and it's changing lives and they're glorifying Jesus. So that's it. So he's getting all the glory, not any of any of us. And we're so grateful for that. So we're going to go on with this thing about the Antichrist and the church, the churches, uh, the, a lot of churches are going to go carnal and legalism because they haven't accepted the power, the power. They try to do it in the flesh and do this and this and this instead of the spirit of God that that's free and it's freedom. It's called bewitched. What happened was they started in the spirit and they had miracles and all of a sudden they're, now they're trying to do it in the flesh by the law. It's all in the spirit. It's dying to self and, and totally yielding yourself to Jesus. It's that, I, I'm talking to somebody, the Lord told me, it's the scripture where Jesus said, if a corn of wheat falls in the ground and dies, if it, if it doesn't fall in the ground and die, it remains alone. But if it, if it goes in the ground and dies, it produces much fruit. He was talking about his life being, dying, and out of the resurrection would come many sons, us, into the kingdom. He would produce a lot of fruit. Well, it's the same thing for us. It's, it's absolutely in our life down. Humble. It's like hum Jesus was a lamb. He was a servant. We have nothing. It's it, it's all whatever we have is to bring glory to Jesus. But you got to know how nothing you are. And then, and when you see His glory, when you see His holiness, and even get a a a, a dot of His power. We we're like nothing, but in him we're everything. It was we, we, he like we were so much. He died for me. I can't even get my head. My brain has a hard time even comprehending all of this. But the Lord loves us. And but I was reading somewhere that America's not really listening now. Listen, I this is where I just heard this from one person. So I don't know. America's not really listed in the end time stuff. And they, they, they were saying it was up to America which way we go and what happens to us in the end time before Jesus comes. So that's why we really got to pray for America because all most of the countries are mentioned, you know, or, or whatever, nations. But they said America really isn't. I don't know if that's true. I don't have any idea, but I'm just telling what somebody said. Regardless, we need. it doesn't really matter. We need to pray for America that God saves us, delivers us, heals us and puts us back on uh, stability, a uh, stable ground, because everybody feels like unstable now. It feels like something's unstable. So, and we've been through all this with COVID and we've been close. So there's a lot that's happened, but the Lord wants to heal our land and get and make it normal. So we're some kind of normal again. And I'm praying that we, that, that the churches can uh, come back because they said a lot of churches that people are not coming back. I'm praying that there's so much power of God in those churches that they can't, nothing can keep them away because people don't want anything dead anymore. They've got to have something that's really alive that changes lives. And that is the anointing power of the Holy Spirit and in Jesus Christ's name that's going to cause people to want to have a part of anything because they don't have time to fool around to waste. They want something real. 
And I'm thanking God for these young men that he's, listen, I want to be baptized in spirit. I don't know if you've ever heard of this, so I'm going to go, thank you, Lord, because I kind of wrote that down, I think, somewhere tonight. And I thought, you know, I probably ought to mention that. So I'm going to mention that, and then we're going to pray for healings. If you've, if you've been born again, the Spirit of God is in you. So you have Jesus in you. But the Lord told his disciples, he had breathed on them, they'd receive the Spirit. He said, now you go, I'm going to leave you, but you go in Jerusalem, you tear there to it, you receive power from on high. And so the Holy Spirit came on them. It came down on them. And they had tongues of fire, and they all spoke in different languages and all. That gift is for today. Had the world, did anybody think we could make it to, in this world today? If they had to have it then, how much more do we need it now? It didn't end there. It just started there. And and, the, and I was so grateful when we found this out. When I was 27 years old, I was born again 25, 27. We found out about it. Asking Jesus to baptize you in his Holy Spirit. That's where the power comes from. There's a lot of people that have a lot of spiritual power without this, but this gives you extra power. It, it brings it, it increases the gifts. That didn't, I mean, we didn't know it. You know, I was praying for people to be healed after salvation because I knew Jesus healed my eyes. So I knew he healed, even though I didn't ask him, he healed my eyes. It was the second I was born again. So all the gifts, we found out about the gifts and all, and we asked Jesus to baptize us in the Spirit. And my husband received a spiritual language. It, he said when they, the, and actually it was Southern Baptist deacons that prayed for him and a pastor, laid hands on him, and he said something warm just came, and he, he, he comes on you. He's in you from salvation, and the, and he comes on you. And um, he said it was just like warm honey just went all over him. But he was praying for a deacon and that had five children. They were having some kind of medical problem. And he was on his knees praying for that family. And he does not know when his language went from English to um, another language. And he's got a beautiful language. And uh, my husband's analytical. So when we, when we heard about being baptized in the Spirit, he, got his, he, knows, he knew the word. And he studied it. And he said, Linda, this is true. How did we ever miss this? It's true. It's scriptural. And so we embraced it. But now I've had to, I've, I was baptized in the Spirit, immersed in the Spirit. It came up out of my belly where he had come in at salvation and filled me with so much glory. I could be, and I was already feeling that before I, and it just came up, 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 and it came out of the top of my head and went, uh, went through my toes, went everywhere. I was saturated in that glory. And the gift started, started right they were just, but not, not the language. And then I read where he, the spirit prays for you because you don't know how to pray for yourself. So I thought if anybody ever needs somebody to pray, I need to pray for myself. So I started asking the Lord for, for that gift. And I prayed for a little while and I only got one or two words and I just kept saying, and then he kept increasing it. And I've had many languages since then, because uh, right when I was baptized in the spirit, the first thing I did, I took friends and we went right to the mental hospital. So if the Lord could deliver me from depression like that. He can deliver anybody. So, um, and I was there and I was praying. And a young man was there in the mental hospital and I prayed with him in my language. And he said, you're, you're speaking in Arabic. And he told me everything. I was, it was all praising the Lord for everything. The beauty that I have. That's before I got my language to pray in tongues when I warned the devil. So I would not, that, that's a beautiful gift. And I, yeah, I use it all the time. And I use, I pray for me and my, myself and I pray, you know, and I worship. Like you said, you're worshiping, let's talk about his creation and all. Well, I'm still doing that, but I still, it's like two languages going on right now. Who knows where to go? So ask Jesus, this is what I'm telling you. You ask him, it says you ask him to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Just ask him and just praise him and thank him for baptizing you in the Spirit. And then ask him to give you the gifts he wants you to have. And then just start and fill you with compassion. I, you know, I really didn't ask for any gifts. I had so much compassion for people to help them. And I had that even before I was born again. That was something that was just born in me to help anybody that needed help. So it was just, it, but it, now I have the power of God on it. So I, it's wonderful. I wouldn't check. I know. It's just wonderful. And we've gone through everything just like everybody else in life. One, you know, and we've, 
We've come through and we're still here and we're still serving the Lord. So thank you, Jesus. Now let's go to prayer and see if he has any more healings or anything else he wants to say to us. So Lord Jesus, thank you for tonight. Thank you that many are going to ask you to baptize them in the spirit and Lord manifest yourself to them. Manifest yourself to them, Lord. Let them, let them know your presence in a new way. Let them know your anointing and your power in a new way tonight, Lord. Or whenever they decide to get quiet before you, that they read about it. That they go and read about that over in Corinthians. Acts about the Spirit coming on them. And then read in Acts about, in Corinthians about the gifts. First Corinthians, uh, start, just read 11, 12, and 13. And love is, of course... I, I believe all the gifts need to work through love, or they're not. You just have to have that love and compassion for people. I see my hair's falling down. I'm letting it grow back, and I'm gonna keep it back, pull back, because I just can't fix it anymore. I'm too old to have to worry about it. But I ask the Lord to to bless you and give you that precious to baptize you. He said, "Ask, and He would give it to you." Repent of all sins. I had to repent. See, my husband. Got baptized right away. Well, I, you know what? I was crying going everywhere. Had everybody laying hands on me, and they were praying in the Spirit, and it just confused me. I had I was by myself, and I repented, and, and it was right after that he just flooded me. So th there, just repent and ask him, and he'll do it. He's the baptizer. Jesus Christ is the baptizer. Jesus Christ is the baptizer. Wow. I mean, how personal can that be? It's like salvation. He's personal. And he loves you and me. So, Lord Jesus, I thank you for everybody. I thank you. What healings do you, what else, Lord, do you want to do tonight? We are just so open for your presence, for your power, for the display of your glory here on earth. Lupus is being healed. Lupus is being healed. On some, Jesus, thank you for healing this person of lupus. So many people that you're, you're, literally healing them of what that's done to them in their life and in their physical body in Jesus' name. Asperger's disease. Asperger's disease. I might not be sharing that exactly right, but that's what I heard, is being healed. If you've got a disease, you don't know what it is. Look up Asper Asperger, Asperger's disease. Somebody may know what a nurse. I mean, I'm a nurse, but I can't remember all of that. I think it's something to do with your brain, if I remember correctly. You don't hear of that. Thank you, Lord, for that healing for somebody. That's an incredible healing. In Jesus' name, it's something to do with the brain. I, I believe. If I remember correctly, jaundice is being healed. That's probably somebody's, uh, let's see. I, I can't see what they said now. I've lost everybody. Oh, my goodness. How did I get out of here? Lord, I, it, it just totally went off. How did I get back where I want? There I am. My goodness. Now there's no comments at all, Lord. You know how to give me comments. Okay, I can't do it. There's no comments anywhere. Well, let's see. What else, Lord, do you want to heal or deliver? A Jacqueline and and Mr. Hyde's uh, personality, Jacqueline, Mr. Hyde, or something. I just heard the Jacqueline. I think that's what I heard. Oh, it's autism spectrum. Oh, okay. Well, that's the brain. Oh, it's Ashley. Well, now, Ashley just popped up. Ashley, honey, I'm so glad you're with us. Thank you, Lord, for healing that Osberger's disease. Thank you, Jesus. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the Lord's healing that personality in Jesus' name. Leukemia is being healed. Leukemia. Lord, we thank you for this miracle of leukemia being healed. In Jesus' name. This is The Lord says somebody's got a false identity. You might as well get it straight. A false identity because you need to get it straight before it causes you a lot of trouble. 
the, I asked God Almighty to show you how to do it. You probably thought, how can I get this straight? I'm asking God to give you wisdom and show you how to do it, honey, in Jesus' name. And that you do it, and it, you don't ever have any trouble, but you can get it straight quickly. For him to give me, that means it needs to be taken care of. I ask him to give you wisdom and give you guidance to how to do it, in Jesus' name. The lumbar, the lumbar part of the back is being healed. Your lumbar is being healed now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Well, okay, the Lord said to break accident, like accidents. So if you're a person that's, um, that, are, that have accidents frequently, that is a demonic harassing spirit, and we break it off of you. All, everybody that has accidents, uh, they, this is, for him to give me that is serious. So we break the de demonic kingdom of accidents on anybody that ever watches this or their family in Jesus, and we break that spirit, we bind it back to the pits permanently and break it. That assignment, we, we bind up the powers of the principalities and powers, we bind the assignment that was given to those networking demons. We bind and break the assignment. We destroy it. And we render it helpless. These demons helpless and powerless. All of them. Everything we pray tonight. And they're all bound back to their master permanently. Permanently and can never come back. And we release everybody from all these sicknesses. And, all we, and we dedicate that part of you back to the Lord. We cleanse every area with the blood of Jesus. And we close every door permanently. And no demon or any other demon can come back and ever take those places again, ever, in the mighty name of Jesus. And you better agree, all of us, for everybody, that they, we're getting free and it's not going to happen again. And there's a person that texts me tonight, uh, the wife is going tomorrow morning for uh, um, a cancer camp and they're doing um, scans to see. And we're agreeing that the cancer is completely gone and the count is so low they can't believe it. I mean, like gone. No cancer trace of it anyway. And Regina, you're on here. We command everything in you to disappear and be totally healed in Jesus' name. And these are permanent healings. They can never come back. And Jesus, dedicated back to the Lord, cleansed by the blood. Uh, uh, we release the Holy Spirit to just take over and, and fill those areas with the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Word, and that no demons can ever come back of any kind to replace that in Jesus' name. Some kind of blockage is being set free. That someone has a blockage. I don't know. He didn't say. He, the spirit didn't say where. But we command that blockage to open up. Open up now. All blockages have to open up now. In Jesus' name. Respiratory. There's a lot of respiratory people being healed. The lungs. The Lord's opening up lungs. I ask Him just to heal them. In Jesus' name. To open them up permanently and heal them. In Jesus' name. Uh, the fasciitis, fasciitis, or whatever it is of the heel, the Lord's healing that. He's healing that right now. He's breaking it up and healing it. God, thank you for that miracle. There's been two or three people that had he told healings of both feet with that. In Jesus' name. Leukemia again, Lord. God, thank you for this leukemia. We command it to go and never come back. We speak to the bone marrow and command it to make healthy blood, healthy blood. Shingles are being healed. Sciatica is being healed. Crohn's disease is being healed. Wow, that was like Crohn's disease is being healed. Uh, receive it in Jesus' name. I see my hair is all falling down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for these miracles, Lord. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for confirming this word with signs. Father, Lord, I give it to you, all of it. I thank you for confirming everything that's been said tonight. I thank you for confirming the where we uh, decree things, that you confirm it in all of our lives, our homes, our children, that you're making all of our crooked places straight, and that you go into our children's lives and their mates if they're married. And that you conform them into, conform us all into your image. Conform us all into your image, Lord Jesus. We want, we ask you to create in us clean hearts and renew right spirits in all of us and in our children. 
and their mates until Jesus comes. Clean hearts and renewed right spirits in all of us. I decree that over all of us in Jesus' name. Lord, is there anything else you want me to say before we hang up here? Anything else? I give you this meet this little video tonight, Lord, for your glory. To do a mighty work in lives. Mighty work all the way around the world. Let the power of God flow. Flow, Holy Spirit. Flow, flow, Holy Spirit. Flow. I cleanse everything. I ask you to cleanse, Lord Jesus, everything so the Holy Spirit can flow like rivers. Set us on fire with God Almighty and the Spirit of Almighty God. Let us be a glow with the Spirit. A glow with your Spirit, O oh God, in Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. Let me tell you about one lady that's, she's been with me from the very beginning. She's one of them that's, uh, that's you know, stars. And I guess last week was a, a, a year anniversary. And, and I thank God for everybody that's been here with me for a year. I was doing little ones long before that, but then, it's been it's been every week since then, but she was listening to a, a, a CD of a, a, a praise thing on uh, YouTube, and it was all about um, pre the presence of the Lord. And then they they're singing, and it's just beautiful. And then it goes into well, all they say is holy, holy, and they just holy, holy, and it went on and on and on. So she said. Um, Miss Linda, I know you see in the spirit, and I hope you can see this because I was listening to this worship music, and behind me the angels were singing. She said they were singing; they were back behind me, and it's like red a glow back there, like a gold red glow behind me. Now it was real dark because it was nighttime when she was listening. And she said, the only reason I'm seeing it because I know you see it in the Spirit. And I'm praying you can see it because I saw it. I was in here when it happened. And she said, all of a sudden, they all went in a group and they went up like a flame. It was like a flame went out of her house. Well, she sent it to me. It was on a black background. And you could see, I could see her over here kind of moving in the darkness. And the worship was going and they were singing, holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. And it went on. And they were behind her, her back in her house, behind her came the angels singing. Now, what I saw was a red, a gold, like red glow. And I, then I saw them come together and I saw them. They lifted up. Okay. So it was gone. She just trans, she sent me the thing to listen to. It was something about the presence. And on, it's like a yellow. On YouTube, it was in a group of of uh, uh, videos, but it was a yellow one, and it was angels with horns on the cover in all directions, and it was the presence, the presence. Well, so they're gone, and I'm going in the kitchen. I still hear, holy, 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 and I think I didn't. It was over, so I went back to my phone. And there was nothing coming out of the phone. So I went back, and I'm still hearing ho I'm hearing this. I went back to the phone the second time. I cut the phone. I cut it completely off. And I was still hearing the same angels singing holy. This happened yesterday. Well, you know, I get up early. And and so I was listening to it. And then I, it was during the day that it all took place because she sent it to me. Honestly, that came from a video where they were singing. It was, you know, they, all they were saying was holy. What the angels sang around the throne is all they say is holy, holy. I, 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 it was in me for I don't know how long afterwards I was hearing this. This happened yesterday. People, and now I was praying with somebody this week. I did not see the whole angel or maybe it was last week, but it was a large angel because a wing went from above the man I was praying for all the way down to the ground. I could see the wing and part of the angel behind the man. So angels, are, you know, and I've been, I've seen the angels for years and years, but they are getting more prevalent and they are more active in what's going on here with, the, with, with people now. So I'm asking the Lord right now for all of you that are still on here that God Almighty 
opened your eyes to see angels around you. Now, I, for a long time, I would just see little gold glimmers in the round room, and and then the, I realized I was it's angels. I was seeing ain't just glimmers as they moved around. So I'm asking the Lord to open your eyes to see what's going on in the spirit around you, because He's there, and all of us have holy angels. Every believer has holy angels. But I'm, I've called on more war and angels around all of us. My husband and I just prayed that on everybody, that the Lord is doubling up in more of the holy war and angels around every one of our lives and our children's lives and everything he's given to us. It's his that he's loaned us here on earth to protect us in Jesus' name till he comes and that no evil can come nigh any of our dwelling places ever in Jesus' name, that we are hidden, hidden, with the blood covering and the holy war and angels that no one can see us to even think about coming near our homes, or our lives, or our cars, or anything else in Jesus' name. So is that not exciting? I mean, I saw that in her home. I saw that glow behind her. I could see her. It was back behind her, and it just, it was like, it was like moving like this with the holies. You could see movement. And then all of a sudden it came together and I could see it lift up. I didn't see it completely go, but I saw it lifting up and it was over. That happened. It's real. He, God is so real. Jesus is so real. And the angels are so real. And it's all to let us know how alive and they are in our lives. And the Lord is, is, is watching over us and his holy angels are here. So she, I didn't. I, she's probably on his shoes. The first one that comes on every. But I missed all that. So, and I missed a lot of people that were on. I think it was like it said. I believe when I shut it off, I think it said it was like thirty-eight people had already clocked in. Well, I've lost those. So I don't unless they came back and clocked in again. But it doesn't matter. I'm not looking at these counts anymore because Facebook is doing a better job about keeping up with what's going on with us, and it is amazing because as of today. I looked, and there was six thousand six hundred and something that had 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 clicked in on these videos like in the last few days. Six thousand and something. I'm so grateful. And for you young men, grab on to Jesus Christ. Get in the Word, and there's so many wonderful promises in there for you. And I, you know. Um, Proverbs is 31 chapters. If you read one proverb of the day, it's wisdom, how to live life with man. David was how to live life with, with the Lord, uh, as Psalms. But Proverbs is living life here on this earth in the way the Lord wants us to live. And just read one every day. There's 31 for 31 days, but if there's an extra one, then you need to read two the last day. And read them over there because the word, it will start speaking to you. It, it's rich. There's a lot of rich things in there. I had to had to live and how to walk in life and, and do it the way we're supposed to do it. So we, we can get it, we need all the help we can get in living today. I pray for you. I hug you. I hold you. And I just hug I'm hold, I'm asking Jesus to wrap wrap you in his love right now, that he wraps you in his love for you. You, you that have never been loved. You young ladies, you women, you men, you young men that have never had a father to tell you they love you. I am telling you the one that created you loves you. And actually in Revelation, it says that Satan is going to rule the whole world. But those that have names that have been written in the book of life from the foundations of the earth will overcome. He'll get the... So if you know the Lord, and if you don't, all you have to do is ask him to come in. I'm wrapping you in his love, his eternal love as a father, the spirit of adoption, that you know him as your father. This man down here was supposed to be your father. God is your father. He created, he planned you. He gave you as a gift to somebody. You just have to forgive them and go on with your life and make sure you, you turn your life around. And it's like the way the Lord wants it. So I think I just ended. It just play again. I don't know. I, I don't know. My, my camera's going in all directions. I love you and the Lord bless you and keep you. And just know you're loved. And this cat, I can't look at my phone because it's on something I did uh, probably three months ago now. It's flipping around everywhere. And I'm going to keep these separate. And we'll pick up here next week. And I pray you were blessed. 
and God's moving. And what we decreed is coming. It's coming. You agreed with it from your heart. Go back and pray them over and keep doing them. I had three, two or three people say they went back and did two. Of, and on the third time, they started getting deliverance. So they're there and it's powerful. The power of this never leaves this. Never. It is sealed in the heavenlies on anybody that listens to it that it will touch their lives and change them. And it's all from the Lord. I love you. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Foreign countries, thank you. We love you. We desire you to be part of us, start with us. And we are praying for you, that you're, you have food, that you have covered, that you have a job. God will open the door. We bind every devil from hell that's keeping you from finding a job. That this week, there will be an opening for you somewhere. In God's name, we ask that in Jesus' name, that the Holy Spirit's are working tonight to make sure that you come forth with a job before the week is over and, and that you have what you need to sustain you till you can get make some money in the mighty name of Jesus. So we love you. God bless you.